that can get voted in and out. Just think about us out there and do the right thing by us and do the right thing by the people that have children. Some of them, water bill. How many water bills you think you're gonna cut off when you raise this water bill? How many houses will be without water? Think about it. Take your time and just remember, Darlington did not get in the shape it's in in four months. Thanks for your time. Just remember that. And I'm not going anywhere. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Georgia. Oh, you're welcome, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for coming in. Okay, Lisa, you've got some comments, I believe. Okay, Lisa, you got other comments from people? Okay, can you hear me? I can. You can't hear me now? Okay, we are, we should be live on Facebook now. There was some uh, issue um, previously, so I don't know how much of this is on Facebook from before this segment. But um, here are the comments from citizens that I've received thus far. <clears throat> the first one was an email in. Um, from Rosa Hudson, who lives in town. She says, my comments are concerning the increases for the water and sewer rates of 40 to 50% and sanitation 28%. For the past two months, my recycle bin has not been picked up by the sanitation department. Will there be a credit for that? I was not informed that this could not be done. Also, the increase of $15.55 to my monthly bill is too much at one time. I haven't seen any improvement ever being made in my neighborhood with the projects you have listed on the letter for the use of this money in the past. I was told that the street I live on belongs to the state. I believe this increase is unfair, such a large jump in the bill. Also, the service I get is not all that great. What criteria was used to come up with this rate? I am not for this and will we have a vote? Thank you, Rosa Hudson. The next comment comes from Patricia Williams. I am writing to respond to the upcoming budget. My question is how in the world you all expect senior citizens like myself and others to afford an increase on the water bills, sewer and sanitation, increasing the way you all have outlined when you are living on a fixed income. There are problems that have not been resolved from this other project that was supposed to be rectified by the city behind my house. Uh, she lives on Milling Street. Mr. Garland knows what I'm referring to about the barrel in the ditch behind my house, which is still there. When it rains or a storm comes, the water back up in my yard, yet I still pay city and county taxes. And now you all want to raise taxes again. This is a bitter pill to swallow when things are not being taken care of when promises that it would be. $186.60 annually is a lot for someone like myself and others on a fixed income. She continued in a second email. I forgot to mention this street over here, Tallulah Street. It has been patched two times already. It really needs to be fixed. It knocks cars out of alignment. It's just terrible. Also that hemp plant, the old oil mill over here in a residential area making people sick. We as a community were made aware of it and were not made aware of it until it was operating. There's a lot going on that is not right in Darlington, but you want to raise water and sewer sanitation rates. This side of town is always left out of the loop in everything. It's not right when I, we pay taxes just like everyone else. This really is a bad time. And with this pandemic going, it's hard on all of us now. People are dying every day. It seems like no one cares about people's lives. It's all about robbing from the poor and making the rich richer. These are thoughts and concerns. I have a lot more, but I think you know where I'm coming from, I hope. When people put old furniture beside the street, it won't get picked up. That's wrong because some people don't have transportation to take it to the landfill. There is a lot of needs to look at in Darlington. And that was from Miss Patricia Williams. Next uh, citizen comment came from Ernestine Lyde. 
She says, she writes, I really think this is bad timing. We are now going through a pandemic and you want to put it in place now. No one can attend the meeting and the way it's being presented is very sad. A lot of the disabled and elderly citizens are not capable of sending emails. Most will not even read that enclosed paper with their book. The feedbacks are going to be very low and I'm sure you already know this. An increase of $9.55 plus $6, a total of $15.55 for what? On the west side of Darlington where the old Hartsville oil mill was and has now been replaced by the CBD plant in which the odor is about the same as before, no change for us. Take it, put it on the other side of town and see how it feels to inhale that odor every day. Seniors were dying from before COVID-19 and most of them are on oxygen tanks already. So it replaced. Just because we are not as fortunate to have high incomes doesn't mean we do not deserve to have a good quality of life to live out our later years. It is not like we have had a say so on it. Just keep placing things over on the west side. Why not move it out in the county or somewhere it doesn't affect anyone? We are already on a fixed income now. You really want to increase the $15.55 a month besides the regular amount. If the water or sewer usage doesn't increase for that month, for that month to us, that'll that's a lot. Then on top of that, stormwater fees to be discussed. Wow, the streets are bad, potholes everywhere. My street, which is Flynn Circle, keep patching it up with tar and the holes are getting deeper and deeper, more problems. Look at the sides, the streets, grass is all grown up. I live at Flynn Circle and every year I have to call to get my street, up, which is dead which is a dead end cleaned up. I pay taxes. Why do my, why do the side of my rock yard streets have to look like no one cares say it ain't so. I enjoy living in a decent environment. So what is the increase going to do for the poor neighborhoods? Make it equal for all, not just some. In God's eyes, we are all the same. No big you and little me. I've been living here since 2005 and I still don't understand the city and county streets, which has changed in the past two to three years. 911 was in the city. Now it's a, now it's a county road, and some of the surrounding streets all changed to county roads. I pay city and county taxes. Please explain that to me. We all deserve be, to be treated with dignity. Ernestine lied. Christina, but it was Ernestine. You said Christina, I thought it was Ernestine, but it's Ernestine. Ernestine. Yeah. yeah. Ernestine lied. <clears throat> Uh, the next comment email came in from Landon Houle. She says she wanted to submit the following comments. I'm writing today in reference to the proposed increases in water and sewer rates and sanitation fees, as well as the discussion of change in stormwater fees. Those increases amount to an additional $186.60 on annual expenditures for families. I understand that infrastructure repairs are necessary and that some of those needs are urgent. My concern though is the timing of this increase. Due to COVID-19, many families are suffering extreme financial hardships that will make an additional $16 a month an unbearable burden. Families might need that $16 for food, medicine, gas, or other bills. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm also concerned that these changes are being passed at a time when people are not able to access all the information or participate in a discussion. We can't attend city council meetings as we normally would, and many of our citizens do not have access to the technology that would allow them to participate in a, even a minimal way. Again, while these increases may eventually be necessary, I believe that this is not the time to ask citizens of Darlington for these additional funds when people are suffering and less able or unable to communicate with each other and their elected representatives. Landon Hull. We have another uh, email um, from Mr. Adam Hull. The flat rate increase of 40, 60, and 28% across water, sewer, and sanitation would increase my family's bill by over 25% per month. And this does not include whatever rate increase is decided for stormwater. We are mindful about our water usage, careful to recycle what can be recycled, reuse what can be reused, and break down our trash as best we can to have as little impact on our community and its infrastructure as possible. Similarly, we are careful with our water usage in order to keep our bills low and to use wisely our resources. Increasing flat rates across the city does not allow for a more equitable distribution of costs. Those who use more place more strain on the system and therefore should pay a higher fee. If 
by misunderstanding the issue here, please help me understand how this is fair to all citizens. Will business see their water, sewer, sanitation, and stormwater fees increase? And if so, at what percentage will their increase be? It seems that local businesses would also benefit from the, these plans for proactive progress. And I would like you to please comment on what those rates are currently and what increases we can expect them to pay. It seems to be that businesses contribute far more to the breaking down of the water and sewer lines than residential customers. And lastly, I hope you will table this discussion Council can meet with the public in attendance. These fees will be a true hardship to many in our community and that they cannot be in the room as you make these decisions, that they cannot speak in person to their elected officials. Thank you for your time, Adam Poole. And the last one, Paul Wingate. This was dropped by City Hall um, in that, in that uh, insert that everybody's uh, mentioned so far in these comments. It gave instructions to either mail in, email, or physically drop them off uh, like you can drop off and pay your water bill at City Hall. So that's how we've been taking comments. All right, Mr. Wingate's letter. I would like to share with you my concern regarding the proposal to increase water, to increase the sewer drainage rates. I am an 83 year old citizen, retired veteran of Darlington, South Carolina. I was born and raised in Darlington, South Carolina and returned here after retiring from the military and federal service 20 plus years ago. I lost my wife in 2019, which caused a change in my financial income. Any, any increase in my sewer sanitation bill would cause additional financial hardship on me at this time. Also at my current residence, I have experienced an ongoing problem with the water pressure in the ditches located on the property. Most times after heavy constant rain storms, the ditches flood and do not drain properly. This has been reported on prior occasions, but nothing has been done to correct the problem. During the warm and summer months, the standing water in the ditches has been a group breeding ground for mosquitoes. It is so bad sometimes that I can't even walk across the street to retrieve my mail and newspaper without being bitten several times, which is hazardous to my health as I have allergies and other health issues. In closing, I would like to thank you in advance for your review and consideration and your assistance with resolving the drainage problem, Mr. Paul Wingate. And he included um, pictures of the ditch. And this is on Gandhi Street. And that is the last citizen comment that I received. All right, thank you, Lisa. All right, somebody got a phone ring. All right, thank you. All right, um, we'll uh, address all those and we appreciate everybody sending their comments in and uh, we'll take all that into consideration as we talk tonight. Um, number seven, unfinished business, uh, public hearing ordinance 2020-03- Holt Brothers Barbecue uh, Economic Development Incentives do we have any comments on that? Any questions? We've already put the, Lisa, the, the public hearing's already been posted for that, is that correct? Yes, sir. And it's been in the newspaper as uh, it is required. And I have not received any comments by email or about the um, issue. Yeah. All right, so do we need to vote on that or motion for that? I, approved? I've got that. We have a motion to approve that? We well, just have to have a motion to approve the actual uh, second reading, not the public hearing. Okay. All right. So everybody good with that. So then we'll go to part B, which is the second reading of the ordinance 2020-03, Holt Brothers Barbecue Economic Development Incentives. Uh, we went over that last week. Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, Kevin Etheridge or Judge Milling, if y'all could look at the... Um, the ordinance that we have, it says, whereas, it's the first paragraph, it goes, whereas, and then there's section five, the developer intends to hire as many as 25 full-time employees. With having the language as many as, does that give them a loophole to where if they don't fulfill the 25 employees, they still can be given the tax credit? Brian, I'm trying to find it, buddy. I'm sorry. 
in section one, the whereas, there's um, seven different sections. It's on the fifth one. Okay. The development intends to hire as many as 25 full-time employees. My question is, the language as many as, if that gives them a loophole to not hire 25 employees. We can change the verbiage on it if you if it would make you more comfortable on that. Yeah, I agree with I agree with you, Brian. That, that says that well, I only hired twenty three. I hired as many as. So. Yeah. So if we just take as many and as out, I think then it's locked in the development. You just want to have, and just have twenty five. Yeah, five. Is that yes, right, Brian? Yeah. Correct. You want to say minimum minimum of twenty five. Yeah, exactly. The development intends to hire 25 or minimum 25 full-time employees, however you want to say it. I just don't want to leave such an open loophole. The whole idea hey, is increasing okay. employment. All right, Lisa. Um, Mayor, in the actual program details in the ordinance that was passed in 2017, uh, the minimum number to required is 20, not 25. Um, he just, the developer said that they would be hiring as many as 25 told them 20 was what was required by the program to be applicable for the Perhaps we could we could put in at least 20 if that's mm -hmm. what the ordinance requires yes sir okay. that satisfies me i just want to make sure there's a minimum that they have to a threshold they have to cover and it's 20 not 25 correct okay Okay, any other discussion on that? Okay, so do I have a motion to approve the second reading ordinance of 2020-03 Holt Brothers Barbecue Economic Development Incentives with the change of whereas on part five, the, de the development intends to hire a minimum of 20 full-time employees? I'd like the motion that we approve the public hearing ordinance 2020-03 Holt Brothers Barbecue Economic Development Incentive Package with the aforementioned amendment. I will second, I will second that. Okay. Second. Do we have all approved? Yes, sir. Okay. Aye. Aye. Okay. Do we have any nays? All right, so no nays, all approved. Um, so it has been approved for the second reading ordinance of 2020 03 Holt Brothers Barbecue Economic Development Incentives with the uh, address the changes for a minimum of 25 uh, full time employees. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. All right, and they're looking really good out there. They're driving by, they've done a lot of work also during this time, so it does look good out there. So stop by and look at it. The building um, like coming around. Yes, building. Yeah. Much much better than it did when it looked like that building needed to be torn down. I thought they, they, they'd done a miraculous job. All right, number seven, uh, part C, uh, Greater Chamber, Greater Darlington Chamber of Commerce funding requests. Okay. Uh, you know, it is not lost on the chamber board that this is an unprecedented time. There are many demands on our city's money. Um, there are many, many things that need to be accomplished. However, money was budgeted to fund the annual Freedom Fest that takes place at the Darlington Raceway with fireworks and food and children's rides and so forth. Um, at this point, we are not quite sure what that might look like. We have four options. The first being, it looks like every other year, full-fledged music, fireworks, vendors, etc. The number four would be only fireworks, people in cars. Since we don't know, what it's going to look like, but we do have plan to have an event. We do request that funding that's in the budget. Why would we request that at this time? People, our citizens will be anxious to get out and do something, 
even if it's in their cars or with masks on. And another piece of this is our experience in this event is that the families and their families that attend are families that um, really don't have enough extra resources to do other things around the 4th of July. Um, we, we see the, the struggle for a family to provide money for a ride for a kid. And, and we have accommodated in the past. So, so the point is we, want, we would like to request the funding. We think even in this unprecedented time, it's a good value for the city. And if you have any questions, I'll take your questions. Do you have any questions from anybody? I've, I've got a question, Mayor John Milling. Okay. I'm yes. just wondering, Nancy, what if the event is canceled or it's scaled back? I know that part of your request has been based upon the funds that has been needed to support the type of program we had in the past. But will yes. you need the full 15000 if we're not going to do that? <laughs> And I think our, our offer to the chamber may be contingent upon whether or not, in fact, with COVID going on, we're in you're able to, to put on an event. Uh, absolutely understandable, because we have no idea at this point what is going to be feasible. Um, and, and I don't know. It, it, the reason we're asking now is because this is generally the time that we ask, and then we can plan the, the event. So, you know, we're certainly open to some negotiation on that and or to some waiting to see what it looks like as long as we know we would have funding and we, we intend to have an event with fireworks if, if nothing else. And that, you're right, that would be way scaled back. Um, Nancy, correct me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. I believe also that part of this in getting the, the sense of urgency as it is, is that we're um, giving deposits for some of these places for yeah. some of the things that we're going to get. We'll get the money back if the, if the event is a no-go, as I understood it from the Thank director. Thank you. Yes. And Thank so you. It's, so it's important that we keep that in mind too, because as we all know, when we book things, sometimes they're 60 or 90 days out. And what's going to happen is that the last minute, if the, um, I think the suppression of these activities is lifted, everyone's going to be, you know, kind of struggling and, and rushing to book these things. We want to be ahead of that curve in the event that that happens. But just keep in mind that we will get the refunded money back for our deposits if we can't go forward because of the stays, if they, if they remain in place. Is that correct, Nancy? That is correct. And thank you for bringing that up because, uh, it, you know, what we want is what, what was in the budget, the 15000 um, we can certainly um, negotiate down the road if none of this happens. But um, yes, in order to plan anything, there has to be uh, some some something in the in the coffers. So, for example, the fireworks themselves cost ten thousand dollars, I think, or you know, give or take, and. Um, we have not done a deposit yet because, but if we had this, these monies, we would go ahead and do that. And then we also, we know we have an agreement with the uh, folks who run the fireworks to refund our deposit. And of course that could go back if necessary. Um, so thank you for pointing that out, Howard. Anything else? Nancy, is the mm -hmm. funding only from the city of Darlington or do you have other funding sources? We are, we generally rely on the county for a tax money and we generally get it. The county has not had a meeting in the last few months, virtual or otherwise. And so we've submitted an application. We just don't know where it is. So no, it's not just the city. And of course we have sponsors as well. Um, it is not just the city. 
we we are but we're a little hamstrung with not knowing where the county is now we're in contact but without a meeting and a vote there's no decision but good question the, uh, so, uh, the city of Durham has sponsored this event uh, each year that it's been in existence for the last six years. So this would be, I believe, the seventh year they would have that. So, Mr. Gardner, is it that I, I don't remember whether the fifteen thousand was actually in our budget, or they were just asking us for that yearly, and we were just um, donating? Was it a part of the budget? I, I don't remember it being a part of the budget. Um, it's something that councils voted each of the last six years to give out of the hospitality fund. It's not right. something that is, is budgeted, but the, the gifts that we gave last year to um, the Soup Potato Festival and for the Cotton Mill uh, Museum and for the Veterans Memorial weren't budgeted either. So it just, it's right. just, just folks coming up and our organizations coming and asking us for this funding. Um, right. That, that's, that's, what I thought. That's, what I, that's what I understood. Okay. So it's already really budgeted because that goes. I want to be very, this is Bryant would like to speak for a second. I want to be very careful with the funding with all the uncertainties of all our businesses and stuff. I mean, potentially we could have a projection of a 50% drop in our revenues for the hospitality fund, which this funding will come out of. Um, so I don't know what we do here. As long as the contingencies are in there, um, with relation to if it's being canceled, we'll still get our, our funds back, then I'd have no problem voting this through. But just want to be very careful on, um, on what we do in the coming 12 months until we figure all this out and see what we look like on the other side. And that's totally understandable. And um, certainly we would agree. Well, we've currently got $821,000 in the hospitality collections account, which was the account this would come out of $821,000 is in that account currently. And our hospitality collections for the month of March were down about $1,500 over 2019. So while restaurants were completely closed for um, the month of March, we did have a dip of $1,500. We're expecting a bigger dip um, for the month of April, because this has been the month where most of the impact has been seen for our local restaurants. And and Howard, correct me if I'm wrong, but those funds are to go to certain uh, events that attract tourism, right? Or hospitality, right? Well, it can be used for recreation or tourism purposes specifically at, at the direction of council. It's just that the, uh, the state law is specific for tourism or recreation purposes, yes. I gotcha, okay. So it's not taking money from another project, basically, is, is what you're saying. No, I'm just saying the money is the money is sitting there and it's not purpose mm -hmm. specifically for anything at this time. It's just a collections account that we have. We make a bond payment out of that each year of $153,000, which is the $1.9 million, which we borrowed um, back in 2017, which we currently have $1.3 million in the hospitality bond account. And that's different from the collections account. Gotcha. Okay, so offer, uh, offer, request on the table, um, understanding flexibility and parameters that may be associated with it. Okay. Thank you, everybody. All right, um, so everybody's clear. It, it is not budgeted money, but it is money that is, can be used in the hospitality toward, like you said, recreation, toward the ball fields, toward parks <laughs> or any tourism type of event. Um, but uh, also that, as Howard said, it's, this is like year seven that we have supported, everybody, the city council supported it. So um, with the grants that um, if the event does not take place or is sized down, uh, I would say, do we have a motion? Do you want to add anything else to that? I mean, no, but if, do we have a motion to approve um, the funds for the Greater Chamber of Commerce funding request of the $15,000 as long as the event goes 100%? If it's sized down, then it would be reduced in, as a refund. Do we have a motion? 
Oh, boy. Mr. Mayor, I don't know whether this <laughs> I don't know was, if we can say it that way or not, sir. So. Whether this was considered or not, but is there a way to handle that up to $15,000 and have drawdown against it rather than just turn over $15,000 at once and let there be some type of request um, that is made as these deposits are being made and other uh, plans need to be funded? I just didn't know whether we could do it that way or whether we historically just turned the 15000 over. Yeah. Howard, we have we have given the fifteen thousand dollars to the chamber unencumbered. Um, but if you want to put the stipulations to it, uh, it's however you however you all want to draw it up. Yeah, I think that's a good job, good way to do it, Mr. Milling. <coughs> okay. Would everyone, John, uh, say that again. How you think? I would was asking the question and perhaps proposing that we authorize up to 15,000, but instead of spending the 15,000 all at once, that the chamber submit a request from this point forward as to receive some of the funding and show us what the fundings go, go towards. I don't know whether that's too much bookkeeping or not. How about if they just gave us an invoice uh, for something too, would that work? Yeah. Yeah. You, okay. So instead of as long as we're well, doing well, this, so instead of just say uh, approving fifteen thousand dollars, we would um, say approve that we will give them money based on the say an invoice of the kinds of uh, of what they would need. Something like that is that what we're saying? Up, up to because they may 000. not need fifty. Yeah, up to fifteen thousand. Well, if they put both Say of their again. Um, agendas together with one with the full blast um, event, and then the second one with the not full blast event, whereas if everybody's in their cars. We should have an estimated cost of what each one of these things, these events should cost. And if they can submit something like that to us, then we can look at it and, and they can ask us, well, based on the full, the full event, we need this amount at this time, if that's possible to do it that way. Or if they're proposing the, the not full event, then this is what we're probably going to need. They should be able to a, a estimate either way of which one or both of them, so we'll know which one, how much they would probably need. Yeah, I think the way Mr. Millen is uh, proposing it is that we basically can give them the approval up to $15,000 and they make a draw. And so, Mrs. Bacchus, if, um, for example, if they come up and Nancy says, well, we're only going to be able to do the firework, we need to go and put the deposit on the fireworks, and it might be $1,000 that they put a deposit down, then she would only get $1,000. Uh, and I, I would think that Nancy would go out and only put a deposit down on it to hold it. And so that way we're not putting the whole $10,000 out for, for the fireworks. Correct. And then if it comes Correct. down to the point, they say, well, we can't do the whole thing, then, they'll, then they, all they would only ask for was the rest of the money to do the fireworks. Correct. And of course, the dilemma now, right now, is we we just don't, you don't know. You don't know. But again, mm -hmm. that way you just want yeah. what you want to basically have the money available. The money's yeah. available, they're, they're given approval. And if it all goes full blast, then it's there. If it's not, then you'll only spend what you need. Correct. Which we would do anyway. So right. well, that way we don't have to wait for you to get it back to us. So you've only taken what you spent. And That's then good. Point. She would owe us back as if they gave you a deposit back off the fireworks order. Yeah. And y'all will be writing. Can you live? Mr. Seegers? Uh, Mr. Milling? I, I agree. Mr. Milling? I'm, I'm fine if Nancy can live with it that way. Nancy can. I'm getting all kinds of texts, but I think we'll be fine. That's that's agreeable. <laughs> well, I mean, that gives you the, <laughs> as you as you spend it, all you got to do is come back and ask for it. And just, exactly. and just make sure that okay. you're spending just deposits. Okay. That's possible. We can, we can certainly live with that. Hey, Brian, did you have a question? I just want to make sure y'all are writing in the contracts, Nancy, just with the contingency of the contingency. They cancel the deposits back. I'm sorry, time. there was a yeah. 
just want to make sure you have in your contracts contingencies that if the governor was to cancel it where we couldn't have it, that you will be able to get your funding back. Right. Oh, absolutely. In fact, we started that in March. We had a pyrotechnics person that was on board that was not willing to do that. So we had to just abandon and find someone who was. So at this point, we don't have any other commitments that um, would be a deal breaker. So we have a few vendors who've applied and of course, if we go ahead, we anticipate lots of vendors applying because they're starved for business. Um, but we just don't know. So, it, yes, we would not blindly go into an agreement without the, uh, especially right now, without the ability to completely back out with no deposit lost. Thank you. All right. Do we have a motion for um, granting the $15,000 allowance, I would say, um, with um, a funding request as they spend, they would turn in an invoice to Howard with the understanding that if the event is canceled, that it will be refunded back. I would make such a motion, Mayor. I will second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 No. Okay, any nays? Mayor, this is Howard Nettles. I have to abstain because of, I have a conflict of interest. Okay. In this Thank case. You for confirming that. Thank you, Howard. All right. So we have it. And I, uh, I'll say aye. All right. So we have it all in favor with uh, Howard being excluded. All right. To grant the $15,000 allowance with uh, a request that the chamber turn in an invoice for funding each time as they spend the funds for the event with the understanding that if it's canceled that the funds will be re refunded back to the city thank okay. you thank you Nancy. we appreciate it right. thank you all right uh new business uh stormwater fee proposal okay um i guess i will start that because i'm the one that brought it up uh with uh mr kinsall and howard that uh, we have uh, lots of issues. And as the as we listen to the comments of people that spoke for the five minutes during the time, uh, we understand your issues. Uh, we also understand that as you listen to what they said, we have lots of issues. There's lots of things in the city that need to be fixed. And the one thing that I would like to clarify is I do not want to raise water fees. However, they have to be raised of some form and fashion because uh, we are way behind. According to Mr. Kinsall, 60% is my understanding. Uh, we're asking to raise at 9.55 and then $6 for sanitation. Um, I agree with Mr. Milling that had stated the other day that we need to, and the, and the citizens, that we need to state and show clearly to them that we are being appropriately spending their funding and money in the correct way. So they're not coming back to us and saying in another year or five years, um, you know, what'd you do with our money? I don't see anything being approved um, is to make sure that we budget that money and the prior money in our next meeting uh, correctly that we show the citizens that we will be responsible and, and diligent with their funds. Um, so. And any other discussions on that? Well, as um, my concern about this is that I think it's not a good time to raise to raise this, these fees. Um, I understand that the fees do need to be raised eventually, but I think the timing is bad. And I'm also concerned that if we want it, we're interested. Are we inter as we're interested in raising the fees? I think before we ever do that, we need to take a clear look at that department and have an external audit done of that department and see why we're losing money and to see where our money is being spent or is the city's money being wasted. Um, as of now, the only report we get from that department only shows us 
the revenue that comes in, but it doesn't show us the revenue that's being spent out. So we don't know where the money that goes into that department is being spent. Is it being wisely spent or is it not being wisely spent? So before we consider raising the taxes on the citizens, maybe we need to take a clear look, a deep, deep, clear look at that department and figure out what we need to do to improve the, that department before we raise taxes. Because I, I clearly believe that money is going in and out of that department is being wasted. And I think we need to have an external audit done to clearly see where this money is going. Okay, thank you, Sheila. And I agree with you 100% that, and above that, I believe that uh, we need to look at everything, all departments. That's why I have been stating, just like you just said, that every department, we need to look clearly and closely at uh, what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? What can we do better? Um, I also agree with you that um, I think we need to, I know we need to raise the water bills and I am, I would propose that we raise, the, that we go ahead and approve it to be raised as, as say August um, to give everybody a chance to get through uh, what we're going through right now. So, but any other discussions? Uh, Mr. Mayor, we had we had Alex Ganey that was going to present some uh, background on the stormwater fee proposal tonight. And just for the record, we collect one hundred thirty four thousand dollars a year in stormwater fees, but our bond payment for stormwater is one hundred eighty thousand. So we're in the red severely in that in that fund. Yeah, I simply wanted to um, comment since so many of our um, uh, at least four of the the citizens speaking were from Ward Two, and uh, um, I know, as I've spoken to each one of them, trying to make them, to explain the need that we have as the city for us to really, really uh, move forward and improve the, the services and the conditions. But it is a hardship for them for it to be administered now. And that was, and I, I, you kind of faded out a little bit, Mayor. So I'm hoping what, what I heard you say that we could delay it. I am all for the proposal as I have explained to each one of them that spoke today. And, uh, but I encourage them to let their let the citizen be uh, heard. Come in and let them know what your conditions are. And that's what I want. I want a little bit more active participation from the folk in Ward 2. Not complain and not let our council know what they're complaining about and, and to bring these questions to them. So I am, as I have tried to, in my little meetings with them to explain the absolute need that we have. And this is the only way at this time that we see that would help us improve the city of Darlington as well as the services. So I am asking that if there is a way to delay it, to put it down, I don't know, to, to it right just not now if this is uh, I, I don't know how that would work because I know the need I know that the city need but I would like for our council to consider that so, so you hear what I said, I'll, I'll say it one more time Elaine thank you uh, was it that we approve it but delay it till for the raise to go up in August oh yeah, yeah. that that's yeah and again if you, and and you I, listen to I appreciate all the comments that they said I agree with the comments. I understand the hardship also, all of us. Some people, as I told Mrs. Ross, um, most everybody is on a fixed income. Uh, some people are on a higher fixed income and some people are on a lower fixed income. We, we all have um, more money coming in, but if we got more money coming in, a lot of times we have more money going out. Um, and so I understand when, you, when you're raising it, it can, it can greatly affect people. Um, but at the same time, if you listen to what they said of all the stuff that needs to be fixed, and that goes back also to what Sheila said, and I agree with both of you 100% is it is not just that we're going to raise it, but we need to go back and with the fine tooth comb, whether we do it or we hire somebody else to do it, uh, we look at everything to see what are we doing correctly and what are we doing incorrectly and what is what can we do better um, in every department. We've, um, got to, we've got to look at it. I'd like to say something as well. Hey, Mr. Gardner. Um, one of the things I would like us to do, and this is more um, specific to Howard Garland, but once we get past this and move forward with some projects we're all in agreement with, I think one of them is recreation, 
One of them's our stormwater issue, the bond that you mentioned, that's 180,000 for 20 years, um, that we don't have enough funding coming into that um, reserve to pay for it. And then the third one is our sewer issue that we have in front of Diamond Hill and Scarlet's. Um, those three issues, I would appreciate if you could make a letter on behalf of council um, to Robert Williams and to Senator Malloy and ask them about those three subjects and if there are any funds that they may be able to help us with. And then if we could do a similar letter um, to our Washington um, representatives and talk to our congressmen and our senators that represent us as well, asking about those three subjects. Because nice. um, right now we've got a huge funding issue. Um, I understand what you're trying to do here, Mayor. Um, I don't want to do it any more than anybody else. And that 200 extra dollars means something to me as well. Um, but we got to do it. And if we keep on postponing, it's only going to make the price tag go up and up. Um, and I, I agree. If we're going to be implementing this in August, um, I think I'd be fine with that. Um, so thank you all. And thank you, Elaine and Ms. Bacchus, for your comments as well. Uh, Howard, Howard, I have one question for you, which was from the comments that somebody stated. Um, the increase would be for the businesses also? Uh, yes, it would. It would be the water sewer increase would be for the businesses and the stormwater fee, which we haven't really discussed yet, would also be uh, a graduated scale for stormwater based on the amount of impervious services that a business has. So if a company, let's say, such as Georgia Pacific would be charged a much larger stormwater fee than someone that has a small business. And that's something we had wanted to discuss tonight, but we haven't gotten into the stormwater fee proposal that we had prepared yet. Any other questions? Um, John Milling, I just have a question of Howard and I don't know the answer, so I'm asking the question. How bad would it wreck your budget and your planning for the improvements that we need to take place? And obviously from what we've been told before, we are lower on water and sewer and stormwater rates than surrounding communities. But how badly would it wreck things for us if we implemented uh, the new rates January the 1st of 2021? Of 2021, um, we'd have to go back and rework the budget. Um, we would have to freeze uh, new raises for employees. We'd possibly have to look at uh, uh, layoffs um, specifically as it relates to uh, our ability to work with the water sewer system moving forward. Um, we have approximately $440,000 in our capital reserve. But as you're going to find out in a moment, we have a project that's uh, well over a million dollars just to repair a, a, a block or two of a sewer line on East Broad Street. So uh, if we go to January, it severely hampers our ability to move forward as, as a government. Is a specifically as it relates to the water sewer fund since it is an enterprise fund. Something else that's uh, hampering us now is we have a problem with 170 water sewer accounts, which uh, we can't cut off yet because uh, of, of non-payment, but when uh, the governor lifts his moratorium on non-payment, they would be scheduled to be cut off. And that may grow to uh, 190 or 200 as we get further along into the year. So that's gonna be an issue also it's not only fee increases for those folks um, whenever it's enacted or not enacted, but also those 150 or 200 who would uh, haven't paid the water bill and would be scheduled to be cut off. So it's, it's going to meet somewhere in the middle where it's going to be untenable if we don't do something soon for our water sewer system. And I know we've talked about this privately before, but if we don't raise rates, then we need to sell the water sewer system. And I'll go on, I'll go on record as saying that. Um, we have an infrastructure problem. And, and if, we, if we sell, excuse me for interrupting, we're, the citizens are back at the same point because whatever entity buys the system from the city of Darlington will raise the rates to a point where they can afford to operate the system and make the repairs. Am I correct? Amen. You're, you're correct, but either we, we do this ourselves or somebody else does it. We, we can't put a Band-Aid on this anymore. This is a 50 and 60 year old problem. The sewer line that's in the ground on East Broad Street is 22 foot deep and it's 100 years old. So there, as, as Mayor Boyd is fond of saying, this isn't a Gloria Hines or uh, Tony Watkins problem. It goes back to Ronnie Ward and Albert Cogswell and those before that who did not fix these issues when they had a chance. And it's just the way it is. We, it's just a situation that we're in. I know nobody likes it, but we we are left to face these problems 
uh, that no one else has been willing to look at. And citizens that are here now and, and the staff are having to make these, these tough decisions. And so that's where, that's, Mr. Milley, I know you put the question out, it's just where we are. We might could do uh, maybe two or three months, but six months would be very tough to do. I have one more question, Howard. You had mentioned the 100 and whatever amount of um, water accounts you're going to be cutting off. Um, can we do a moratorium? I think there's a fee that we charge to reinstate those water lines. Um, is there any way we can waive that so that as long as they pay their previous amounts that um, we'll set, we'll turn their water back on, but also but making sure to waive the reconnection fee? We have $33,000 in our balance account now for water sewer fund. We were down $20,000 in collections. Um, I don't know what to tell you. If you want to do that, I'm sure it will help people, but it's going to hurt the water sewer department. And um, what does that be? Thirty-two dollars. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. So we we either and or more. That's a big that's a big issue as well. So we need to look at that, and we You're truly are being in favor of that one. Well, can and we split the difference and just do? I mean, if it's a fifty dollar reconnect fee, or you know, why not do it for twenty five? I mean, we're helping the you know, the, the folks out with a water bill and we're not, you know, crippling the, the city either. There's we a compromise gave, that can be made. We just gave away $15,000 for fireworks. You're talking about- <laughs> It's a different you're fund about, It's you're different. Talking about, Thank you. I understand Thank you, fun, <laughs> But you're talking about $10,000 and I understand we're tight, but if you got your water cut off, you're probably tight too. Um, and yeah. these, these are extenuating circumstances. So. Having a one-time wave of the fee for one month, um, I don't understand. Um, that's extra revenue we would be making. It's not like we're losing revenue. Um, that's extra dollars on top of the pie. Now, a lot of the folks that are cut off won't come in and pay. They'll make an agreement, and I hate to be frank again, but they'll make an agreement and don't pay. And well, so a three-month-old water bill becomes a six-month-old water bill, and eventually we send it to the Municipal Association of South Carolina, MASC, and their debt set off program. We, uh, we sent $25,000 in uncollected order fees to the Municipal Association in January. So uh, we ran into this problem in 2005 and 2006 where we had more than $700,000 in uncollected water sewer fees because we were writing things off. So it's just my job to point these things out to you. And, and you can certainly do that and we'll do that if you vote and tell us to do that. But <clears throat> It's going to put us behind the eight ball and it will push for it'll it'll just put off people paying the water bill. If you give them some in you know, some of these folks, they'll make an agreement and they'll say they'll pay it and they don't come in and pay it. And it's just the way it is. And I, Mr. Kinsall and I hear a lot of these stories and we're we're empathetic to them. Um, and we try to give them the benefit of a doubt. But if it's the same folks that have different excuses every month, I don't know what to do. We, it's the water sewer fund is a, is a business. It's supposed to make money. And right now we're putting so much money back into the ground to fix pipes that are 80, 100, 120 years old that it's becoming, as a, again, I say, it's becoming untenable the way with the money we're bringing in right now. Our rates are 30 to 40% lower than Hartsville, Timmonsville, Florence, Lamar, and those are communities that are having some of the same situations that we are with their infrastructure. So if you imagine that we're 30 to 40% lower then Lamar and then Timmonsville and then Hartsville. And we need to work out something that's going to help the water system and help the citizens of Garland. That's just, just where we are. We've, we've gotten more than $7 million worth of grants since I became city manager in 2010 to help our water sewer infrastructure. It all goes in the ground, nobody sees it, but it's been mostly for low to moderate income areas. So a lot of the areas where we're have, gonna have problems in the next 10 to 20 years are areas that aren't low to moderate income that the infrastructure is aging. It's that, it's that corridor along East Broad Street and West Broad Street where the line is 25 to, 20 to 25 foot in the ground and nobody wants to really talk about it. But um, you know, the 2014 estimate from Davis and Brown was that we had $30 million worth of infrastructure that needed to be fixed and that was six years ago. So you could probably add another five or $10 million to that. And that's, that's $40 million in a town of 6,000 people. And that's just where we are. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't enjoy telling you that, but I am the messenger of this. And I think Mr. Kinsall it, it, it would, would echo this and some of the folks from Davidson Brown or anybody that we work with, Ms. Lathan over the years understands the hole that we are in 
from an infrastructure standpoint, we need to fix these things and they're not going to be fixed overnight. It's just the way it is. So as I How? understand it, the water bill, um, the, the water is disconnected. There's a $50 fee to turn the water back on, right? Mm -hmm. So is that a 15 day deadline or, or mm -hmm. how does that work? You have to pay at the same time. Mr. Kinsaw, I, I would feel better about him talking about that because he deals with the fees more on a, on a, on a monthly basis than I do. I get, I get the appeal after it goes to, through him. Mr. Kinsaw, are you, are you here? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Y'all hear me? Uh, on the 15th of the second month past due, the water is cut off. And before the water is cut back on, they pay a $50 reconnect fee. Close to the bill. And there's a timeline on that $50 reconnect fee. It's it's when you want your water to turn back on. It's the same okay. time, Sheila. Yep. I understand that. I, I'm getting to a point. My point is, I'm getting because I've had an experience with a couple of people who yes. um was given an extension or, or said they would pay it at this time or this particular date, and then they didn't have or couldn't come in and pay it because they didn't have the money to pay it, and another fifty dollars was added to it. Yeah. So if they couldn't pay the first 50, how are they going to pay the 100, 100? So is that the process of the way it works? It works. If they make it, we, we will give them a once a year agreement. They pay half the bill and they have a week to pay the other half. If they do not, if they, they sign an agreement, agreeing to that date, and I tell them don't sign anything you can't stick to. If you know you can't pay it, don't, don't write it on the paper. And if they don't pay it by the date that they sign on that paper, it is recon it's disconnected again. And yes, they have to pay to cut it back on. Yeah. So all I wanted to, to, to kind of clear up. So you are right now, what I'm understanding that you count on the disconnect because you 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 kind of count on the reconnect fee as income. You be looking forward, to, not forward to it, but you count it in that you expect this amount of things to be disconnected because it and if it's disconnected, you're gonna get the payment plus the fifty dollars, and that would that boost. You be looking for that. Here's when problem which I have said to said to you would uh, uh, Howard when it comes to this because we I get we get so many complaints and situation Davidson Brown is right there with you 30 years they say where in that 10 years ago 15 years ago that did the recommendation that they are making to us now where we got to do something these things wasn't made before that is put on the backs of, 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 of as you say, 20 years of neglect is put on the people now, and we got to do something now. That's why I have such a problem. And I understand when Sheila says we need to look at that whole thing because they're sitting back, people getting $1,000 worth of whatever. Where was the recommendations before? And why wasn't they acted upon? If they well, were not please. And I think somebody should be accountable. I've been here 14 years. We bring it up every year in a budget meeting that rates need to be increased. We show the capital plan what needs to be done from Davidson Brown, millions of dollars. Council has sought upon their self not to act on any of it in the 14 years I've been here. And that's the reason we in the hole we in. And I will I step we, up to the, I'll act. step up to the plate. Okay, let me take control real quick. I'll step yeah. up to the plate, and you can document this: that Curtis Boyd is the one that's bringing it up. It's got to be raised. We're getting ready to spend. Howard's will spend just about every dime you got to try to fix one street. And we know, we all know, sitting on this council, that these. Is the time, this is the time that these pipes and drains are all 70 plus years old. We can sit and blame everybody behind us is fine. But today we're gonna to make a move forward. We yes. have to make a move forward. 
I understand this. Let me finish talking for just a second. The people know in this city, in every city, that one of your most important things besides food and medicine is that you've got to have water. So to me, I got me stepping out on a limb. Some people will take advantage of you. They may and they may not. But we have to draw a line. And I'm not there to listen to them. I listen to people all the time. I try to help people all the time. But somewhere the line has to be drawn. They know they have a water bill. They know it's got to be paid. They know there's going to be a $50 fee to cut it off and cut it back on. We don't, none of us want to have to do that. We don't want to bait that $50. Nobody in this council wants to make $50 for turning somebody's water off and on. But when you send a truck out there, you send a, work, a worker out there, it costs money. And even at $50, you probably haven't made a whole lot of money at all to send that worker out and back to take the time to cut somebody's water off and on. So again, what we're proposing tonight is that what I'm proposing tonight is that we go ahead and raise what we said, 955 and the $6. And I propose that we raise it as in August. We can't, we, re, we needed to raise it a long time ago, but we need to raise it August at least is my proposal. Um, and then I also would like to propose that there would be a percent of increase as we move forward in years to come. <coughs> whether it be one or 2% that each year that it's uh, automatically raised so that we don't shell shock each person uh, with a large increase. But we've got to get caught up uh, because otherwise we're just gonna, we're gonna be built way, way to the side and we have no money to fix anything. Mayor, I think we enacted an ordinance maybe three or four years ago where we did impose incremental increases in our water and sewer bills. I'm not right. sure that stormwater was picked up, but evidently those incremental increases are not have not been sufficient to take care of the problems. Am I correct on that, Howard Garland? Howard, you're, you're muted. Howard, you're muted. Yeah, we haven't raised this um, stormwater rate since 2016, but we've been raising the water sewer rates 3% three, 3 a year. Right. Right. Will three percent or will the ordinance that raises at three percent a year for water and sewer, if we make the raises that the mayor is proposing, will that three percent be enough to keep us in line, or do we need to come back and visit that as well? I, I, sorry, uh, is, that, is that for me? Uh, Howard Garland. Yeah, I, I believe that we not only do what's on the table but we put in a adjustment that would be based on the CPI. I wouldn't just say uh, set it at three or 5%, whatever the CPI would be for that year, I would, I would tie it to that like we do for millage increases. Um, that way, if the inflation rate goes up, we can adjust accordingly. If the inflation rate is low, then we would adjust accordingly. Uh, as far as, the, um, again, I. I I know this line item is that we're talking water sewer, but this is all coming under the line item of, line item of storm water. Yeah. So that, that's what we had on the agenda tonight was to talk about the storm water fee. And let me again say that the storm water fund collects $134,000 a year, and we have a bond payment of $180,000. So we are in the red severely on that fund. If, right. any of the, if any of the funds need to be raised, it's the storm water fee. And I, I'd like for Alex Degani to talk a bit about the, the proposal that we have in place for you so you can hear and understand the, um, the math behind that if, that, if that's all right with y'all. Alex. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I come for you tonight to talk to you about the proposed stormwater rate increase that Sheila and I have put together. Um, we try to do a lot of research on this thing so that we could uh, try to be fair with it. Um, we know there's going to be a lot of um, questions, concerns, because we're talking about going up on the other rates as well. So we want to make sure that we're fair across the board with it. Um, right now, I took over stormwater in August of last year, and I'd like to say that since I took over in August of last year, we've made a lot of headway on the stormwater um, system in the city. Um, we've been able to do very little infrastructure work. We've had to make a few repairs, um, but... There's a lot more stuff that needs to be done, just there's not, the money's not there to do it. 
Um, currently, when I took over, it really, really wasn't a stormwater department. Um, you had, when I took over, we had the uh, back truck that we got a payment on. You got the stormwater bond, which covers the uh, project that, that was done on the southwest, um, southeast, southwest Darlington side of town. Um, then we have two employees. I have one employee that comes out of street and sanitation that gets paid out of street and sanitation. And I have one employee that gets paid out of water and sewer. I told Howard that, or, you know, Howard and I discussed it. And I told him that if we were going to have a department, we needed to make a department, make a budget for it. And I would like for everything in stormwater to be funded by stormwater instead of pulling money out of water and sewer, street and sanitation. Anytime we have a problem, we've always had to either pull out of a line item out of street and sanitation or a line item out of stormwater. We know stormwater is about drained now. They've got their own issues they need to deal with or uh, problems they need to deal with. So we don't need to be trying to pull money out of their budget next year to try to do stuff for stormwater. Um, so he and I, we talked about it and I told him again, I'd like to be able to fund the stormwater department out of its own budget. The only, the only way we can do that is by increasing the rates. Um, like he said, stormwater right now bringing in $134,000 a year um, and have a bond payment of 180000 a year. So you can see that you're, what, $45,000, $46,000 in the hole already. Um, so currently, the residential rates are $4 a month. Um, and commercial, no matter how big or how much impervious surface you have, you pay them $5 a month. Um, so we, we, like I said, we did some research on it and um, looked at some neighboring um, communities, cities, counties, to kind of find out how they've been doing things or how they're basing theirs. Um, on commercial right now, we're bringing in a, about $21,600 a year and we're bringing in 109488 on residential roughly. Um, but the way we're looking at it is to increase the commercial rates based on impervious surface with a minimum with a minimum amount of $25. Um, and then the residential rate would go to six fifty. So we're looking at increasing residential by two dollars and fifty cents a month. Um, the biggest, the biggest increase is going to be on commercial. Um, what we're looking at is, and we're we're trying to, we kind of followed the city of Florence. They were there's when you start doing a lot of looking for stormwater programs. There's not a lot of areas that really have what they call a stormwater program or actually have stormwater fees. So we had to kind of reach out and see, but Florence paid uh, someone to come in and do a study and come up with a figure as to how they charge. And basically what they do and what we're trying to do is they charge on commercial accounts, they charge $3.50 for every one unit of impervious surface. One unit equals 2,500 square foot of impervious surface. Um, so that's what we're looking at doing, which would be like Walmart and places like that, they would have um, a lot more impervious surface. So of course their rates would go up tremendously. Um, but we're wanting to base it on $3.50 for one unit of impervious surface with one unit being 2,500 square feet or a $2,500, a $25 minimum fee. So some of your smaller businesses that don't have a lot of impervious surface, their flat rate's gonna be $25 a month, your larger uh, businesses are going, you know, increase significantly. Um, like I said, current commercial stormwater revenue is $1,800 a month. With our proposed increase on the commercial side, it would increase our revenue to $16,234.75 a month. Residential right now, we're bringing in $9,124 and it would increase our residential um, revenue by $14,826.50 a month which would be a total revenue of $31,061.25 and an annual revenue of $372,735. Um, Howard has kind of put together a budget for the stormwater department and we're gonna be cutting it close by being able to fund that department with $372,735 a year, but it's a start. Um, I'm a firm believer, and I've said it before, I don't believe in robbing Peter to pay Paul. You know, if we've got issues in stormwater, we need to be able to fund it out of stormwater. Um, we have infrastructure problems. Um, we spent the last several weeks working on something over the rescue squad that was a, it's a city storm drain. 
Um, fortunately, we, we finished that project up. Um, we just have a little bit of asphalt work to do, and we'll be finishing the parking lot of that one. Um, and, you know, I feel like doing it. We did it in-house with the with the help of Davidson Brown giving us the direction of um, – pipe that we needed to use, size pipes, we were able to, to uh, tackle that project and finish it. And I felt like it was a success. Um, and I feel like we probably saved the city a lot of money uh, by doing it in-house. Um, I've said it before, I'm a firm believer in doing stuff in-house that can be done in-house. Um, and I'm a firm believer in saving the city money where we can save it. But at the end of the day, we need to look at uh, creating a department for stormwater and raising the fees so that we can have a budget and support the stormwater program for the city of Dallas. Anybody got any questions? Okay, let me, I'm just looking at uh, the proposal that you have here. I mean, that what, um, what's in our packet. So right now, $131 is collected annually that is specific to stormwater. $131,000, $134,000, yes, ma'am, is collected annually for okay. stormwater. But, okay, I, I got it. And so with all of the things that you've listed here, with the rate increase, you would be able to have an annual budget of, of the $372,735. Yes, ma'am. We would increase our revenue in the neighborhood of $372,000, give or take a little bit. All of it's going to be based on the accurate numbers for residential and accurate numbers for commercial and impervious surface. We still have a little bit of work to do to put all those numbers together, but that's a good budget number for us um, to work with. Okay. And you know, it's in layman's terms. So, why? Even right now, why would the commercial accounts be so much less than the residential? Well, because you look at it, you only have, um, let's see, roughly 300, I guess, roughly 300 commercial accounts. And when okay. you look at 300 commercial accounts or so, um, you're looking at, um, and, and, and I don't know the numbers right off the top of my head, which I could run it real quick. Um, but when you look at your commercial account, let's see. When you uh, look at your commercial accounts, you have a lot fewer commercial accounts and they're only paying a dollar more than residential was paying. So, you know, the person yeah. that has a half acre lot, you know, here in the city is paying a dollar less than Walmart's paying and they got a parking lot and a building full of impervious service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which should have been looked at a long time ago. All yeah, right. This should, been, this should have been addressed a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. But there, I, don't, I don't know. Before I took over stormwater, I don't know that there was, like I said, there wasn't actually a stormwater department. It used to be up under street and sanitation. And when I took it over, we pulled it out from up under street and sanitation. So it was kind of funded by street and sanitation. And... You know, like I said, that should have been addressed a long time ago, but it wasn't. So now I'm trying to address it to make sure that we're doing what we need to do for the city of Darlington to be able to have the funds that we need to be able to do the projects that need to be done. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, baby. All right. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. So let's get moving here. Do we have a proposal, a motion for the proposal of... Uh, the stormwater fee to be raised for $9.55 and $6 for sanitation as of August 2021. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you can't vote on any fee increases. You have to have an ordinance for that. Okay. So um, you can certainly get an understanding or, or have council members express their opinions, but you have to have a public hearing before any type of rate increase. Okay. Sorry. So then we so we just get everybody in agreement on, on go ahead and going forward with the uh, public hearing. I agree. We move forward. I agree. I agree. I agree if we move forward after we do a complete audit of that department, then I agree that we will move forward. 
I think we've got to move forward before we have a complete audit because an audit could take months and we've got to address something sooner than that. Yeah. I unfortunately agree. Well, we're only yeah. talking about this rate coming in effect by August, right? Well, we don't know until we get- We're talking about this rate coming in effect by August, right? Yes, ma'am. Then that's months down the road as well. It's just me. So I don't understand what the problem was with having an audit done. You can initiate an audit immediately, just hire a firm to do an audit. Sure, we could do both at the same Unless time. Unless you're trying not to have an order to avoid something being known. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, I, I, I need to mention also, we still haven't had our, our budget workshops. And we haven't had first reading or second reading on our budget. And I think it's important, some of the comments that the citizens have made tonight, too. Once we come out from under this quarantine, we can have public meetings and actually have the folks show up for a public hearing to make their comments. I mean, it's one thing to read them. It's another thing to look them in the face and then to look you in the face. I think that should be done, but we're, it's almost like we're not just having a council meeting, not, it's almost like a budget budget workshop. And I think some of these things can be looked at in a budget workshop better than just a regular council meeting. And so I, I mean, I don't mind all the discussion It's great, but it's just, uh, we, we have a uh, time set aside later this month for, budget hearings and in, in, in meetings with department heads about these about these same issues. Good. All right. Howard Nettles. I mean, I, I think we should move forward. I mean, I, I agree we need to do an audit, but an audit is not something that's going to take place overnight. And if we want to work toward an August uh, increased date, I'm okay with that. Okay. So we have a, um, we move forward with uh, what needs to be taking place, Howard, for um, Public hearing. Um, we have to have a we have to have a um, the public hearing is usually held the, the the night that you have your um, your second reading for your budget. So what what we would do in, in, in accordance with that is we'd have a second reading on the budget, then you'd have public hearings on uh, your budget and your different increases for your different departments. And I would think that we need to do regardless of when you do the the fee increases that you would have these hearings in June before the end of this budget year. So we are, so we would be following state law where we have to have a budget presented before the beginning of the next budget year, which is July 1st. So that we can't really have any, any public hearings tonight um, is something that we'd have to have like a first reading at the June council meeting and a second reading later in June, which, which the second reading would be when we'd have the public hearings for the different increases. Okay, all right. Well. All right, well, we have a motion to go ahead and approve to move forward with that. So we'll do that in the, in the correct process. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, line item B, uh, East Broad Street sewer line update. Uh, Howard Davis Brown. Yes, sir. Um, as everyone knows, we had a sewer line collapse on East Broad Street between Vaughn and South Urban Streets. It's uh, the area that's right in front of Scarlet's Antiques and right near the turnoff to go into Garlington Veneer Mill. So uh, rather than me giving a, a, a long update on that, I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Freddie and uh, the folks at Davis and Brown who have some maps and some information for you tonight to look at. Freddie, uh, y'all wanna take it over? Uh, everyone at Davis and Brown? Yeah, sure. Michael, you wanna yeah. show your pictures and go ahead? Sure can, I sure can. Thank you, Mayor and Council. This is Michael Williamson. Davis Brown, I have uh, Glenn Curvin, David Brown, and, and Ed Davis with me as well. Uh, so, obviously, we uh, we all know of, of our large hole there on, on Broad Street. And I'm going to share a screen with you here. Hopefully, that hopefully you can see a map right now. Does everybody see a map? Yep. Yeah. All right. So obviously we have pipe failure here. <clears throat> what we have done is we have gone to Fourth Street. There's a manhole here. We dropped a camera in. We have run towards back towards Main and videoed that. We have dropped in here and videoed back towards the pipe failure. We've also been able to go to Urban Street. There's another manhole here. 
dropped a camera in there and been able to, to access it with a camera uh, and, and see the collapse that is there as well. That is not associated with this. We've also been able to go to Spain Street and drop a camera in there. And from Spain back towards Urban, we've got, uh, we've got a lot of video. We've got some still pictures we'll show you. Uh, uh, it shows the pipe in, in pretty, pretty bad shape. Uh, and then we also have video from Spain down towards the cemetery. We're not going to show the video tonight, but we do have a couple of still shots. But I just want to get you familiar with, with what we're talking about. So right. shortly, obviously, you, we, we had the hole here. And everybody can see that when, when you go by. What is very disturbing is on Urban Street, uh, the influent and effluent pipe is blocked. And uh, Alex came out there with his guys, and they tried to jet it out with the back truck. Uh, and it, it was just, it was, it was impenetrable. So uh, it is stopped up and that's why there are still bypass pumps running today. So we went in to Spain Street, come back towards Urban Street and it's coming back up the hill. And within 60 feet, we came to another area that is nearly collapsed. And it was all that the camera could do to get up under the, the top of the pipe where it had fell in. Uh, and then we went a little bit further, about another 240 feet, and we got to a complete collapse. So about halfway from Spain to Urban, halfway somewhere around Old Florence Road area, the pipe has collapsed again. The only difference is, is it just hasn't showed up to the surface. Now this pipe is 22 feet deep where the pipe failure is at. That's what we dug down to. That's what uh, they had to have two trench boxes stacked on each other, you know, to be able to, to even access that pipe. Uh, guys, this is a, that, that's a very dangerous dig. So all the asphalt had come up. Um, there is a fire or gas main rather on Scarlet side. On the opposite side is the water main. So you, you, you have a lot of confined area there. That, that you've got to work in. Um, these manholes are just as old as the pipe. The, the, the best drawing that we could find was from 1920. So that's 100 years at least. And these manholes are, are equally as old. Um, so hopefully you can now see a picture. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. Okay. So this is what we call the inverted pipe. It's the bottom of the pipe. This pipe should be perfectly circular. And you can see the crack down the top and how the pipe is kind of falling in and making an M shape. It's cracked along the sides, on both sides. And these three failure modes together allow that, that ground pressure to push down and what else happens is once uh, you get a surcharge, what we call surcharge, so that's when the water fills the pipe. And when the water fills the pipe, it's allowed to go back into these cracks and it, and it actually surcharges, it actually pushes the water back up into the ground. And what happens is when the water level comes back down out of the pipe, then it pulls debris and dirt back with it. And that's why allows the pipe to cave in. That's why allows the hole to show up at the surface. Is that constant up and down of the water level pulling that dirt back down. Um, on top of that, obviously you, you have the creek there. It's a very low area. It's very deep there as well. You know, again, we're talking roughly 22 feet deep. Um, the groundwater is, is pretty strong there. I believe they ran into groundwater uh, at about 12 foot down from the surface. So that means that there's about 10 feet of, of earth that, uh, that has that that's saturated with groundwater. So you've also got that weight of the water pushing down on it. And then also the water's trying to find its way out. And this is its path of trying to find its way out. So, uh, 
after meeting with Freddie and Alex, and we're trying to, to get a best game plan together, there's there's a couple of methods that could be done to to rectify this. If it was not collapsed, we could do something called pipe bursting. But with the pipe collapsed, you cannot do pipe bursting because there's no way to get anything through the pipe. So for this area from Spain Street to Irvin Street, you're going to have to dig it up. So that means the contractor's got to come in, get it, dig down at Spain Street, replace that manhole, dig all that pipe up to Irvin Street, replace that manhole. So that's two manholes that are, again, very deep. Uh, it can be replaced with PVC pipe. Uh, we can use something like an SDR-17, something like that, just a typical sewer pipe, and make sure that it's bedded correctly. You know, 100 years ago, this terracotta pipe, this clay pipe, it is, 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 is phenomenal pipe. It's great pipe, but it structurally, it's not very strong on its own. If you drop it at a crush, it's just like you terracotta pipe uh, or pots at home that you plant, you know, flowers in. Mm -hmm. uh, back then, they did not know that they needed to bed the pipe like we do today. You know, there's not a whole lot of terracotta pipe laid anymore because of, of that, because of the situation we have right here. But if it's bedded correctly, and what I mean by bedded is that it has a layer of stone that lays under it. So you have about six inches, eight inches of stone, the pipe will set on that, and then you encompass the pipe with stone or sand or something like that. And what that does, that allows all the force to be distributed around the pipe correctly and not have point loads like what this pipe is seeing. Um, so for right now, what I'm looking at, what we, we've kind of pulled together is to rectify the problem you have at hand. Just the sink again, to, to get it back flowing. You'll have to go from Spain Street to Urban Street and past Urban Street to the actual collapse, which is another 80 feet roughly. Uh, so it's somewhere around 720 linear feet. Uh, the budget that we've come up with is uh, $1.25 million. Out of that $1.25 million, $225,000 is just in paving. Again, the entire road will have to be dug up. Uh, with it being that deep, I need to explain to you as well what drives some of this price. With it being that deep, there is nowhere to, to set your dirt. So when you start digging, you're going to have to haul your asphalt off because, you know, we can't store that anywhere. We'll have to carry it to the city site. Asphalt has come up and then you're, you're, you're going to try to salvage as much dirt as you can because dirt is very expensive when you have to purchase it. Again, we ran into groundwater at somewhere around 10 to 12 feet. So let's just estimate that we, you know, halfway at 11 feet. So only half of the dirt we dig out can we salvage. That means the other half of the dirt has got to be purchased and it's going to have to be what we call select fuel because it's got to be compacted, uh, you know, in like six inch to 12 inch layers so that it can support the road. Uh, and then on top of that, you'll have somewhere around 12 inches to eight inches of stone, depending on what DOT requirements is on that road. For that day and sometimes it's hard to get an answer out of DOT on that and then we have to put back the same amount of asphalt that's there so you're talking about uh I believe we were talking about pulling the asphalt completely out of uh, the project because uh, I believe CDC can maybe we can lean on them getting them to pay, pay for it some so now you're looking at a uh, about a million dollar budget somewhere around million twenty five thousand dollars on the budget and that works out to be, you know, roughly eighteen to nineteen hundred dollars per linear foot of pipe that has to be replaced. Uh, RIA grant, the RIA grant, we have already applied for, but the maximum amount that they will allow is five hundred thousand. So we have applied for that. 
full amount. We showed that the, you know, the project was going to cost well over that and that the city would have to be able to support the remainder of the project. So that grant, we hope, will be available by the end of the month. That's what they're telling us. It may take a little bit longer. Uh, I don't believe it will be any shorter just because of the situation we're in. In the meantime, we are finishing up the engineering on it because we have got to tell the contractors because it's got to be bid out, obviously. Uh, and it has to, to apply for the RIA grant. It has to be bid out for 30 days. And we are looking at having the engineering completed on May the 18th so that we can advertise put on Skiba and get these, these plans out. Uh, you know, yes, it's an existing sewer system, but the contractor doesn't know what it is. So obviously we got a little engineering we got to do. We got to show him what the manholes are, the size of the pipe. Uh, and then there's a, another little thing that, uh, that we've got to address that drives the price of this project up is, is again, the depth. So your typical sewer line that's six feet deep, eight feet deep, your service line that comes from your residential or your commercial buildings would generally tie straight into your sewer main. That is how this is done. But to do that, that would mean you would have to dig back down 22 feet at everywhere a service would go. So we kind of put our heads together. We come up with the idea of making a common header, what we call a common header, which would be a pipe that would be you know, six, eight feet deep that would capture all the services and dump into the manhole. That way, when the city ever needed to either add a service or repair a service, they don't have to dig down 22 feet. All they got to do is dig down to six feet or eight feet. Uh, and get to the service and they can make their repair. Beyond that, you know, this pipe, the, the crack that you saw inside wall and the crack that you saw on top, those cracks propagate this pipe as far as we videoed. Again, this project budget that we're talking about here is just from Spain Street to Irvin. From Irvin all the way back to Maine, it's gonna to need to be repaired as well. But there is where you can utilize the pipe bursting method, which is where they pull a large pipe through the existing pipe. Uh, and that project, you know, I've worked on the budget for it and it goes, it carries it from about $1,900 a linear foot to be replaced down to $1,300 in linear foot to be, you know, to be bursted. And that includes the common header idea as well. Um, there's a tremendous amount of bypassing that's got to be done, that's already been doing for this project now. Um, obviously the road closures and the detours, all that is, is very, very, very expensive. And on top of that, then you got, you know, once you bypass and then you got the diesel fuel you have to contend with and all that as well. Uh, the depth of it allows for a, a very large machine that has to do the digging. Again, you don't have a whole lot of room because you're only working in a right away for the road. Uh, you only have so much room to put dirt. So that means that you've got to literally hold the dirt off as you dig it. And that just slows production down um, that's somewhere you got to haul that that wet dirt. That uh, those are trucks that you got to, to pay for. So it just it just compounds immensely. Um, do does anyone have any questions for us? I do. <laughs> I was listening intensely. Okay. Uh, you you got me when you were saying about the twenty the twenty feet and how dangerous that is, okay? So uh, everything that you are doing here, here now from what I'm hearing from the, de from the detail is that you can't lift it up, but you're, you're gonna institute somewhere along around Urban Street of, of, with the main holes where we will, cut, let me see. Now this is how I got it. Connect the, the 20 feet deep pipes up to the six or eight feet thing. 
you're you're trying to is that part of this that's what i'm hearing so that in the future we will not have to go down 20 20 feet to correct any problem you will still you will still have a pipe that's 22 feet deep that is your okay. sewer main okay common header which is a separate pipe the pipe that is 22 feet deep is about an 18 inch line the line that I was talking about that we could put as a common header would only be like an eight inch line. It's only an eight inch pipe. And that would be much more shallow. That way that the city could go back and, and make their repairs. That line would go back to a manhole, one of the new manholes and tie into it. And then it would dump down into the pipe that's 22 feet deep. <laughs> I get kind of lost when y'all go to all of the details. I was just trying to get it pictured in my mind as to, um, because when I saw the stormwater work being done on this side, this these projects, it wasn't no way near 20 something feet down. You know, it wasn't like that. So that's, I don't see how we're gonna be able to connect it. But then that's not my problem. I, I mean, that's not for me to know. That's why you got the engineers, but I still wanted to know what it is because you, the way you made it sound is that it's so expensive and that it is so expensive and dangerous and, and dangerous. So, and then I also, what I gather from what you were saying that in your repairing this, that you are making it less dangerous or for us in the future, that uh, what you're doing is, is a way for us not to have to go through it like this. That and is I'm correct. Trying, okay, so I'm just, I'm, I'm just, you know, layman. <laughs> but it's a lot of stuff and it's yes. expensive. And for going forward, but you have already identified that going up the main street, we could have the same problem, but there is a cheaper and better way to do it. That's correct, yes ma'am. All right. So is all of this going to be mapped out when all this is said and done and when it's finished? I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? Is all of this work going to be mapped out for future references for 50 years down the road instead of us not being yes. able to know where no lines are, no <laughs> piping is, or anything? Yes, ma'am. Will there be a mapping of all of this? Yes. There will be a map for any contractor can even bid on it. And then once uh, the pipe is laid uh, and inspections are made, they'll do something called res line, red lines or either has built drawings and that'll be produced. And then at the end of the project, you'll have a complete set of plans. And that is turned over to the city uh, via paper copy and digital copy. Ooh. Guys, we in for it. <laughs> All right. Thank you for everything, Mr. Glenn. That was very Amen. detailed. We appreciate it. We, we've got a mess, but I appreciate you taking care of it. Thank you. All right. Um, East Broad, let's see, uh, South Carolina Department of Transportation, North Main Street, Water, Sewer Line Agreement. Uh, Mr. Mayor, that's me. Um, for a number of years now, we've been going back and forth with SEDOT concerning the water sewer line relocation that's gonna be associated with the North Main Street Bridge Project, which is right near Marathon Oil and Bristol Oil. Three or four years ago, uh, DOT wanted us to pay the relocation cost, which started out around $60,000 and then ballooned to close to 350,000. Um, we balked at paying those costs. Uh, we had the other utilities and other utility directors and uh, city managers tell us some other towns that DOT was paying their utility costs in their communities. So when we presented uh, SC DOT with this, they suggested that we uh, pay only part of it, a percentage. And so then we looked at that, we brought it to council in 2018. And uh, lo and behold, before the end of that year, uh, the state legislature passed a uh, law saying that SC DOT had to do all sewer and water line relocations when they're working on projects in the right of way. So it's good news for us. And uh, all you're doing tonight is voting to give the city manager the authority to execute an agreement for SEDOT to replace water, our water and sewer lines in North Main Street as part of that bridge replacement project. And that 
Once they start, it should take anywhere from 15 to 18 months for it to be completed. They could complete it in 69 months, but they want to keep the road open due to uh, school. So that four lane road will be a two lane road for probably uh, anywhere from 15 to 18 months once the project starts. And again, all you're voting on tonight is just the uh, giving the city manager the authority to execute an agreement with DOT for them to pay for the relocation of the water and sewer lines. Okay. All right, thank you, Howard. All right, do we have a motion to uh, give this? City manager, the approval to um, have DOT, SC DOT to pay for the water and sewer. Almost in that we approve. On North Main Street. Almost in that we approve the SC DOT North Main Street water sewer line agreement. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, all in favor. All right, thank you. Aye. That's been approved. Um, line D, city swimming pool, summer schedule. Howard? Uh, yes, sir. Um, we'd like to open the pool after the 4th of July. We are waiting on the guidelines of Missy DHEC as to how we uh, social distance at a public uh, swimming facility. And this will give us some time to uh, not only get the pool in, uh, in ship shape for the summer, but also to enact any guidelines that we would receive uh, from SED Heck concerning uh, use of a public swimming pool. Uh, so what we'd like to do is to get y'all's approval to open the pool uh, July the 8th, 2020 this year. So uh, once again, uh, everything goes well, we would open on that date uh, per the governor's office approval in SED Heck. Okay. All right. All right, do we have a, a motion to approve opening the pool on July the 8th? The city pool I'll make a motion that we open the pool on July 8th within guidelines of all the um, rules of the, of the state. I will second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, 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 okay, good. Motion has been approved for the city swimming pool summer schedule to open up on July the 8th. All right, uh, discussion of fines for bulky re uh, refuse removal, $100 after five days. Um, we had talked about it the other day about whether to uh, include it in the actual work of the city or to add it as a fine. Um, I brought it up to say that if they uh, leave it out there, we, if we allow people just to leave it out there, they go have it everywhere all over the town. And it's going to keep them more of a mess, more of a nuisance. So I was proposing there's a discussion to move forward um, with offering it as a $100 fine that we play place on their water bill if they leave stuff out after a five day warning. So how is that going to affect um, things that people leave on uh, empty lots? If it's left on an empty lot, we're going to have to pick it up. Um, so if it, that becomes a big issue, then we'll have to readdress that. But um, if we leave it everywhere, this is going to be everywhere. Um, so you, nothing, the city needs to go ahead and remove it if it's on an empty lot. But then we need to we need to research and try to find out why and who had left it on an empty lot. So we. So I'm sorry, but there's no way that we can find the the owner of the empty lot. I understand that it may be coming from somewhere else, but I should be able to be held responsible for my land. Um, so I still don't understand why we can't. Is there legal reasoning? I, I have no I have no issue with that either. But if it's my, if it's my lot, if it's my lot, and I and I pull up on there in the property and see that it's all on there, then um, um, I feel like I'm responsible for making sure it's removed. Yeah, I mean, call law enforcement if you keep on having an issue, um, but be responsible for your own land. Yeah, hold on one second. I think there's a bad storm. I got to check something real quick. Oh, yeah. Large hail over the parts for y'all, so be careful. My, my house yeah. is getting hammered right now. I mean, it's big in golf balls. Yeah, look at this. Wow. Gosh. I got to get my dogs in. 
Oh, it's hailing all right. Ooh. We got a mess out there. Oh, oh God. I can hear well, it coming. All right. Yeah, it's hitting my house now. All right. Um, so, Howard, how is Howard back yet? Oh. Gee, good. Woo. Okay. Howard, how would we uh, have a public hearing on this? Or? Yeah, it's hitting everywhere. We may yes, want to wait till everybody's yes, back here. Yes, you hear it? Yeah. It's really coming down, hitting everything. I'm afraid it's going to break windows. I've never seen anything like this. No. Well, the roofing contractors will be happy. Yeah. It, oh. Some of this hail is bigger than golf balls. I've gotten several pictures. And my house as well. Um, Mr. Mayor, we don't, we can't have a, um, a vote on the uh, on the fine because it's just like a, a fee. You'd have to have a first reading and a second reading on that. Okay. All right, well, we can move forward with that on the next agenda. All right. Uh, I'm yeah. sorry. I apologize. It is really they beating up on my little deck out there. Oh yeah. It, uh, on F on the ball field drawings and design, Lee Andrew. Lee, Lee may I'm have here. some issues. I'm sorry, Lee. Yeah, yeah I'm here. Sorry, it's, it's it's bad at my house, right? But anyway, it's um, bad here too. I yeah. know going through. Um, what was the question? I'm sorry. I'm just a little flustered right this second. All right, give the uh, your proposal for the ball field drawings and design. Well, we, uh, what I'd like to do, in, in, instead of just saying, here, go do this, um, and, and this person not get the bid when we put it out for bid, what I'd like to do is pay the architect that did the first drawings to give us a concept. So we, when we put it out for bid, when we do the RFP, uh, that everybody has a guideline or, or, or not necessarily what they have to stick to, but a concept of what we want in the park, how we want it. They can, they can redesign it if they want to, but we'll have something tangible that we can show people. This is what we're looking at doing. Um, and instead of just saying, all right, we want you to draw it and then his firm or whatever, his people don't get the bid. He's done all that work. So we're looking at paying somebody to do us a concept before we put it out for proposal. Oh gosh, excuse me again. Okay. We have everybody back. Yes, sir, I'm here. Okay. All right, uh, so do we have a motion to allow Lee to go in and get the drawing started? For the Elaine, is not, is Lane is Lane. not in her seat. Okay, Lane. She stepped away for a minute. Okay, thank you, Sheila. Well, while we're waiting on her, I've never seen hail that big. That's incredible. Telling you, good Lord. Oh. <coughs> Man. Yeah, you did. Okay, where are we? I'm sorry. I apologize. Um... Okay. All right, we were making a uh, motion, Elaine. Uh huh. For what? Howard, I mean, for excuse me, for Lee Andrews to be able to go ahead and pursue uh, the ball field drawings and design, 
Oh, okay. Do we need a do we need the motion? It has already been made. We need a second. We don't have a motion yet. A motion. <laughs> do we have a second? I'll yep. second. And Brian seconds it. That's fine. All right, everybody in favor? Uh, 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 uh. All right, all in favor, aye. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, all. Over that. Thank you, everyone. All right, uh, we have a uh, first reading ordinance 2020-04-106, Blue Street Zoning Change, GC to R10. Lisa? Yes, Mayor, thank you. Um, there is a piece of property at 106 Blue Street. Used to be Morella's Dress Shop, if you're familiar, coming off North Main, past the um, Strickland's ABC. You take that right, ball fields are on your left, Morella's shop is on your right. Um, Mr. Sammy Evans has bought the property next to it and has bought the Morella's dress shop property. And he is putting some townhouses on the first property and wants to continue that development. Um, to do so, he will need to change the zoning from commercial to residential. Um, the planning commission met um, via Zoom in on, on April 21st, and they approved um, that recommendation to change the zoning from general commercial to residential, low density residential. The only comments we got from the neighbors during the planning commission was the lady who lives on the corner, and she just wants to make sure that it remains residential. She does not want to see it be commercial. So she was in favor of it as well. Oh, wow. Well, we've discussed this before. Is there any? I'm just, for time's sake, I'd like yes, to- Yes, you previously uh, approved Mr. Right. Evans' prop previous property change. Right. I'd like to make that we approve the first reading ordinance 2020-04-106 Blue Street zoning change from GC to R10. I would like to second that. Okay. All in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Okay. Very good, aye. All right. I'd like to thank Mr. Evans also for, for investing in the city of Darlington. Amen. <laughs> Doing a wonderful job. If you've not gone by and looked at it, it looks wonderful over there. All right. Um, H is uh, Boards, Commission, Appointments. <clears throat> Lisa? Yes, Mayor. Um, the Our fiscal year ends June 30th, and as such, we do, um, that's when our turnover happens. Um, we do have one seat on the planning commission. Somebody is uh, Miss Page. Her term is set to expire on June 30th and she would like to serve another term. She's been very engaged and involved and staff would appreciate her continuation on the commission. So we ask that um, you reappoint Miss Page to the planning commission. Okay. Do we have a motion to reappoint Ms. Page to the Planning Commission? I will make the motion. I'll second that. All in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Okay. All right. So that's passed. Uh, Mrs. Page will be reappointed to the Planning Commission. All right. And there is one other open seat on the Planning Commission, and we have received. Um, two applications uh, for service, um, and those were included in your packet. Uh, Lisa, I'd like to I'd like to nominate Michael Wiggins. I know that he's applied to be on that on that um commission. I'll be happy to second Michael Wiggins. I would like to nominate Miss Hines since she's our prior mayor and applied to be on that commit on that board as well. That's fine. I think I, that's have to go through one vote at a time. And Mr. Wiggins was nominated first. Okay. Now we have a first motion, a second motion from Mr. Wiggins. Do we have uh, any ayes? Aye. 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 Okay, any nays? 
Nee. Okay. Elaine, did I hear your Elaine? Oh, I said I. I just, okay. you know, just at two spots. So, okay, is, is that okay? All is right. who? I mean, am I? We were voting. They were voting for Mike Wiggins. Right. I'm just saying, as long as she had the, she just indicated she had two other slots, and that Wiggins was first, and Hines was a another one. I think she only had one slot. Right. <laughs> There was only one seat available. There was only one slot. Yeah, one oh. seat. Oh, then I'm in. I'm. I'm. Okay. Okay. Uh, mine is gonna be a nay because I got the. Uh, I'm. I'm. I given um. The mayor, or, or Mayor Hines, former Mayor Hines, my support. Okay. John. Yeah. John Milling was the I. I was an I. John Seegers? Aye. Howard Garland? Or Howard Nellen? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Okay. So we have four eyes. So Mike Wiggins would be the position. Is that correct, Lisa? Yes. Thank you. All right. And that is the only well, would, um, application so like that we see, have. So I would like to see on some of those committees some African Americans who apply for some of these seats on some of these committees and that's instead of a minority, uh, uh, instead of a, a majority of Caucasians on all of these committees. See, we thought I, I thought the planning committee was um, well, anyway. We had deal with it. The Lisa. time is yeah, yeah. We had deal with it. Um, I, to Miss Backus's, I, I want this meeting in. I got so much to say. All right, Lisa. Um, to Ms. Backus's point, um, our application to serve on the city boards does not include um, race in any way. It is not I on the form, do. so we would not know who, what color anybody is based on the form that we receive. Um, I think it does. And there are very many seats still available. There are two on the Historic Landmark Commission, one on the Beautification Board, one on the Board of Zoning Appeals, and two seats on the Design Review Board. So there and are plenty Mayor of seats Hines, still available. And Mayor Hines applied for that seat the night that you mentioned that that seat was open. The night that, that you mentioned that seat was open, Mayor Hines applied for that seat and came to you and told you she was applying for that seat. Yes, ma'am. And you received uh -huh. it in your packet. And I said what I said, and I meant what I said. OK. There's right, enough racism you. in this city as it is. All right, let's, uh, let's drop the racism. Thank you. Well, all right, stop uh, being racist. All right, Mrs. Backus, thank you. I'm not being racist. As I so. said, stop Mrs. being Backus, racist. Mrs. please meet Mrs. Backus. Thank you. I um, can unmute myself. Yeah, that's fine. Receive uh, information from any department heads. Is there any questions on the information from department heads? My only question is, or my only statement would be, um, the capital plans that you have, Freddie, and Mr. Alex, if y'all could just get us some actual printed information of what y'all want to do over the next few years so that we can disseminate that out to the community and let them know what we're going to do with these funding um, increases that we're talking about. Okay, anybody else? I'll be more than happy to get that information to you in the next couple of days. Thank you, Alex. Okay. All right. Most, most of mine are trying to be trying to pay. All right, um, thank you. Um, um, th right. this is kind of going back to the, the going to the uh, the citizens' request, and and I'm not going to take that much time. But there is a, one of the gentlemen that referred to that drainage over there. Is that, um, 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 Freddie? Did you all? I don't know whether that's you or uh, uh, Alex now. That would Indeed, be Alex. A, a, is Alex, you said? Yes, a ditch would be Alex. Okay. D to see about it, to at least respond to that, because this isn't the first time he said something about that. I don't know what to do. And I truly want us to see what in the world we can do 
with Miss Patricia Williams. She keeps talking about a barrel in the ditch back here. All right, I've Elaine. Been back Elaine. I don't see. Elaine. Yes. If you will yes. text me the address of where that barrel is, PD Junk just texted me earlier and, and asked about it. That they will be glad to remove it if it's something that they can remove. Uh, so if you don't get with me on that, then I'll make sure that's taken care of for you. I just okay. would like to well on that situation in the ditch, Alex, if you don't mind. Yeah, that's the first I've heard about it. So if y'all can get me the address, whoever has it, I'll be more than happy to check on it. Okay. Very good. Very good. Okay. We have uh, any council comments? Additional? Okay. And we have a reminder that Tuesday, June the 2nd, 2020 at 630, we'll have a monthly meeting again for city council. Um, and do I have a motion to adjourn tonight? <coughs> we adjourn. A second? I'll second. Second that motion. All right. All in favor? Uh, 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 All right. Everybody be careful out there and go check your cars. Have a good night. Each other that information about the barrel, Elaine. Thank you. Well done. Thank you all.